Hello, class. Um, as I mentioned in class today on Monday the 26th, I am recording this after class because um, I forgot to start recording when we were going over this example. So I'm going to go over the last example that we had for 7.2. And then I'm gonna do the, basically the summary of the shell method um, before I cut this video. And then you'll basically have two videos for Monday the 26th. You'll have this one as video one, and then the one that goes over all of the examples of 7.3 will be the second part for today's lecture, okay? So I did discuss this in class, so that's why you see everything all written down. I'm just gonna kind of explain it um, on record, okay? So for 7.2, number six, it said, find the volumes of the solids generated by revolving the regions bounded by the graphs of the equations about the given lines. So it had these graphs, so we needed to find the region bounded by these two graphs. So in order for me to do that, I had to find out their points of intersection. So I set x squared equal to four x minus x squared. I added x squared to both sides, resulting in the equation 2x squared equal to 4x, and then I subtracted 4x to the left-hand side, and I ended up with 2x squared minus 4x equal to zero, okay? Then I factored out a 2x, and so I ended up with x minus two times 2x, and I set each factor equal to zero, and when I did that, the solutions I found were x equal to zero and x equal to two, okay? So I knew that those were the points of intersection. So what I did was, is I plotted the point zero, and if I plug in zero into either of these equations, I do get the result zero for y. So it is this point here, zero, zero. I also plugged in the x value two, and regardless of which equation you plug the two into, you get the same y value for both, which is four. And so that's the point that you see here. Now, in order for me to know which function is on the top and which one is on the bottom, I had to plug in another x value in between the x values 0 and 2. So I plugged in 1. Now, when I plug in 1 into y equals x squared, I got 1 as the y value. So there's my point 1 for x, 1 for y. But when I plug in 1 into the second equation, I ended up with the y value of 3. So x value of 1, y value of 3 would be this point here. So this bottom part is the graph y equals x squared, and the top curve is the graph y equals 4x minus x squared. Now, um, so for this particular problem, we're doing the um, x axis. So we're revolving around the x axis. So I drew this little arrow here to show that I was revolving around my x axis, okay? Now they did ask me to use shell method. Oh no, this is 7.2, so we're still in the disk and washer section. So we do have to use disk or washer. Now, since my line of revolution is horizontal, disk and washer says I have to use perpendicular rectangle. So therefore my rectangles would have to be vertical. So I drew this red green um, vertical box and just said that the width here was dx and we do have to figure out the height that's how we figure out all the rest of the problem but we actually need to do decide whether or not we're using disk or whether we're using washer now since this is the line of revolution and essentially this is the region that's revolving around that line of revolution um it's not touching the line of revolution on the entire interval from zero to two Therefore, we will have to use um, the washer method versus the disk method. See, had this been flat across here and then a curve, then I would have been using the disk method because there would have been no gap between the line of revolution and the shaded region. But since there is a gap between the line of revolution and the shaded region, we have to use washer which means I would have an outer radius and an inner radius. So remember that your line of revolution is the center of the revolving. So it's the center of the disc or it's the center of the um, washer, okay? So when you're talking about the outer and the inner, you're gonna start from the center and go to the far outside of the region. And so that happens to be all the way up here. It doesn't matter if you draw your rectangle over here or if you draw it over here, it's still the same outer part from the center all the way out to the end of the region, okay? 
And so that is my outer radius. And that is expressed by the top minus the bottom. So in this case, the, the curve 4x minus x squared minus this x, this y value, which is just zero. So really you have like a minus zero in there, but it really doesn't affect anything, right? Then you have to take out the inner. So you're basically just mapping out the gap. So from again, the center of the revolving up until the gap ends, okay? And it doesn't matter whether you drew the rectangle here or you drew the rectangle over here, it's still the same sort of measurement. If the top is still gonna be this curve, which is x squared, and the bottom is still going to be the line y equals zero. So y equals x squared minus y equals zero. Um, it just so happens that when you minus zero, it's not gonna affect anything. So it's just the function there in the black. And then you square them, you get these four, these three terms. And then same thing here, minusing zero, it's really just like taking x squared squared, which gives us x to the fourth. So we ended up with this expression. We did evaluate it from zero to two, and we ended up with this value here. Okay, and you can pause the video so that you can make sure that you understand how each of those steps were found uh, and make sure that you get the same steps, but essentially you should end up with this volume. Okay, now, once you return from the video, we will talk about part B, which was revolving about the line Y equals to 10. Okay, so in this particular problem, um, I had to draw the graph because I just emulated the graph here, but it only went up to four. And apparently I needed to revolve around the line y equals to 10. So if I would have continued this same sort of units, uh, y equal to 10 is way up here at the top, okay? So I'm revolving around that line y equals to 10. So remember, this is your line of revolution. It is the center of the disc or the washer, okay? Now, since I'm not touching um, this line of revolution at all, not even just in one spot, like here I was touching the line of revolution at one spot. Here, I'm not touching the line of revolution at all. There's like this big gap in the middle, okay? Um, so I am going to have to use washer, which means I'm going to have to do the outer radius minus the inner radius. Now, remember how we find that. You start at the line of revolution, and you move outward until you get to the end of the region. This is the region, okay? So if I'm starting here and I'm going all the way down until I get, this is the beginning of the region in this direction. This is the end of the region in this direction. And so then I go all the way up again, okay? And that is the outer radius. So if I revolve this whole section around and around and around, it's gonna give me that solid, um, kind of like a deep dish plate, but all filled in, okay? This is the flat side. This is the little curvature of the plate. And then when, as it revolves, it's just gonna be completely solid all the way through, okay? But in order for me to get the actual shape that is occurring when I revolve this little leaf around this Y equals 10, I actually have to take out the part that's missing, right? So again, you start at your line of revolution and you go all the way until the region begins. And that's where it begins right here. So that's where I stopped with my rectangles. So again, if you wanna figure out what the equations are for the outer and the inner, you should be doing top minus bottom, okay? So top function is represented by 10. And then the bottom function is actually represented by X squared, okay? So this one is represented by X squared. Then for the inner radius, it's going to be the top again, which is 10 minus this top curve, which was the function 4x minus x squared. So 10 minus 4x minus x squared. And then it's just a matter of doing the algebra to make everything work. Okay. So here, when I square this, I get 100 minus 20x squared plus x to the fourth. Here, all I did was distribute the negative so that I got 10 minus 4x plus x squared, but I still haven't squared it, okay? Now this part I did do over here. So I simplified everything in this brackets on another sheet of paper. So on this sheet of paper, I took the first three terms minus this squared. This being squared means that three term polynomial times itself. 
So then I distributed my 10, distributed the negative four, and then distributed the x squared, and I ended up with all of these terms. And then I just combined like terms, okay? So 100 stayed 100, negative 40 x's became negative 80 x, x squared, x squared, x squared became 36 x squared, negative 40 x, or no, I'm sorry, um, negative four x cubed and negative four x cubed became negative eight x cubed. And then the plus x of the fourth was right there. And we do have a minus that has to get distributed to everything. So when I did that, the 100 would turn from a positive to a negative. This would turn from a negative to a positive, positive to a negative, from negative to a positive, and positive to a negative. And then I combine like terms. So I have 100 minus 100 means it goes away. Negative 20x squared and negative 36x squared gave me negative 56x squared. Positive x to the fourth and minus x to the fourth canceled out. Um, and I just had positive 80x and positive 8x cubed. And so where you put them with respect to the negative 56x squared is your choice. You could have put one in the front, one in the back. You could have put them in the reverse. You could have put them both behind, both in front. It really doesn't matter. They're just three terms. As long as the x, the 8x cubed is positive, the 80x is positive, and the 56x squared is negative, then it does not matter which order you put them in, okay? And so I actually use this descending order to plug into my brackets, since that is what all of that simplified down to this. Then from there, I did my power rule to find the integral. So this became eight X to the fourth over four, which reduces the numbers to two. This became X cubed over three, that did not reduce. This became X squared over two, but the 80 and the two did reduce. So then I plugged in two to all three of these, ended up with these values, plugged in zero to all three, just ended up with one big fat zero. Did these calculations, got this, and then times pi is just 128 pi over three, okay? So again, you can pause the video here, make sure you understand all of those steps, um, including the side work, and, um, and then you should be good to go after that, okay? So once you confirm all of that, you can resume the video, and then I'll start going over the summary for the show method. So for the show method, there are basically four cases you can have. Okay, so I have the same region for all four cases on my piece of paper. So notice that this function is always four minus x squared. Um, this value is two, that value is four, and that's consistent for all four images. The only thing that's different in each of these four images is where the line of revolution is located, okay? And so the basic format for shell method is going to be two pi, integral of some bound to some bound, lower bound, upper bound, and then some function here times another function here, and then with respect to whatever variable that you're trying to integrate with respect to. The thing about a shell method is you have to remember that rectangles are parallel to the line of revolution. That is what is different than disk and washer method. Disk and washer method used rectangles that were perpendicular to the line of revolution, whereas shell method uses rectangles that are parallel to the line of revolution, okay? So h, h of x or h of y, depending on your variable of uh, integration, um, h is always gonna be the height or the lengthier side of your rectangles, okay? Row of X is a little bit interesting to wrap your mind around, which is why I have the four different cases. Because the row of X is not the width. The width is represented by D of X or D of Y, okay? Row of X is just telling you where your rectangles are spanning, okay? So your rectangles are going from here to here, and that value of the location of where the rectangle is at a specific point in time, okay? So when we're doing the span of the rectangles, um, it's always gonna be the value of the line of revolution minus the variable of integration, or the, which will represent your region, or it's the region represented by the, line, by the variable of integration minus a value, 
the value being the value of your line of revolution, okay? So I'm gonna walk through each of these four different cases with the lines of revolution in different spots so we can talk about this, okay? Because the way you get H and the way you get rho is by doing uh, top minus bottom or right minus left. And which one is top and bottom and which one is right and left depends on the variable of integration, okay? So let's start off with case one. So case one has a vertical uh, line of revolution at x equals zero, which is also known as the y-axis, right? And so in this, if I'm doing show method, I would have to do a parallel rectangle, okay? So in this parallel rectangle, um, what ends up happening is that I, because it's parallel, and because it's vertical, this is dx. So I now know my variable of integration, it's x. So when I go to set up my um, integral, I know that I need to be using x values of my region. And the region goes from zero, x value of zero to x value of two. So those are my bounds. Now the height is the lengthier um, side of this. So the height in this particular function is actually, or region is actually that measurement, okay? And because it's standing up vertically, in order for me to get that measurement, it's going to be the top minus the bottom, okay? So in the parentheses, it's going to be this top, which is represented by four minus X squared, um, minus the bottom, which is just zero. So that is my H, okay? Then I need to multiply it by rho. And for rho, and I know it's dx, for rho, it's right minus left. Since you already used top minus bottom, this is going to be right minus left. You always have one of each, okay? So then you have to ask yourself, because rho is for where the rectangles are standing. It's always going to be the region minus the line of revolution or the line of revolution minus the region. So who's on the right, the region or the line of revolution? And in this image, the line of revolution is on the left and the region is on the right. So for the region, I'm actually going to use the variable of integration, which is x, minus the line of revolution value which happens to be zero for X, okay? And that is how you would set up that particular integr integral. Now I could do all the algebra and calculate it, but that's not what we're trying to do here, okay? For case two, case two is a little bit different. It also has a vertical line of revolution. So I know I'm going to be using vertical rectangles because in show method, my rectangles and my line of revolution are per parallel. So I'm gonna have V equals two pi. We know for vertical rectangles, this is DX. I also know that this lengthier side is going to represent H, okay? So since I'm doing DX, my bounds are my X values of the region, which are from zero to two. Now for the height, it's again, the same situation, top minus bottom. So it will be the four minus X squared, minus this line, which is y equal to zero. So all of that is for h, okay? Top minus bottom. Now I'm going to do right minus left for the row. And I am still integrating with respect to x. So here again, for the row part, you're asking yourself what's on the right and what's on the left, the region or the line of revolution. And in this case, the line of revolution is on the right and the region is on the left, okay? So it's right minus left. So the line of revolution value, which is two, minus the region, which is always represented by the variable of integration. I'm integrating with respect to X. So that's the variable that represents the region. So it's the value of the line of revolution minus the region. The variable represents the region. Just like up here, my region was on the right and then my line of revolution. So the variable to represent the region minus the value of the line of revolution, okay? Now let's move on because these are different. 
they're now horizontal lines of revolution. So when you have a horizontal line of revolution, your rectangles should be horizontal. And if they are, you're actually doing dy. However, the lengthier part does still represent h, okay? So we're gonna do v equals two pi. And since we're doing dy, um, we're going to be looking at the y values for the bounds of integration. Now the y values of this region go from zero to four. So different y values than when we were integrating with respect to x. So when you try to do the height, it's going left to right. So then I'm gonna be doing right minus left. So the right region is represented by um, four minus x squared. The left is represented by this, and this is just the line y equals zero. So it's zero. Then for rho, it's always gonna be the region or the line of revolution minus the other, okay? So notice I already used right minus left, which means this needs to be top minus bottom, okay? So who's on top, the region or the line of revolution? In this particular case, the region is on top of the line of revolution. So we need the variable of integration to represent the region on top, and then the value of the line of revolution, which happens to be a zero. And again, you could compute all of this and find the integral, but we're not doing that. I'm just helping you set it up, okay? Now, case four is a different scenario, right? Because now the line of revolution is on the top, okay? So same thing as before. The shell method, we have to use horizontal rectangles. So this is dy. Um, and then this would be that length or that height, okay? So again, I'm integrating with respect to y. So my bounds need to be y values, which are zero to four. And then this is going left to right. The length here is going from left to right. So I'm gonna have to do right minus left for that height. So the right is the curve, four minus x squared. The left happens to be y equal to zero. So I just subtract zero. And if I've already done right minus left, then this has to be top minus bottom. And so who's on top, the line of revolution or the region? Here, the line of revolution is on top. So that value for the line of revolution minus the variable to represent the region. And my variable this time is y. And then that is what I would integrate to find out the volume. Okay. So hopefully that summer helps, that summary helps figure things out. Hopefully, with this problem with the outers and the inners, it helps always start at your line of revolution and go all the way to the outside of the region. Okay. And then start again and go all the way until you get to the inside of revolution. And sometimes it does require you to turn the page upside down if you're confused about the outside and the inside of the revolution. So remember, this is going around this line. So this is the outside and this is the inside. As it goes around, this y equals to 10. If I flip it over, it's the same situation. This section is going around the so y equals to 10, it's going around. So when it does that, this is the outside and this is the inside. But remember, it's this rectangle minus that rectangle. And when you try to find the length of this rectangle, it has to be top minus bottom. When you go to try to figure out the length of this rectangle, it's gonna be the top function value minus the bottom function value, okay? So always keep that in mind and you should be good with these two together. Um, and then now you'll be able to go into part two of the, the lesson that we did today. So I'm going to stop the video here. If I can just get this thing to pull up. There we go. Have a good one, guys.